if you're on a farm or a homestead, you need to do this now, or it's getting close. What are you doing, Tuck Tuck? What are you doing, Tuck Tuck? Huh? What are you doing? Look at you. Look at you rolling around. Goodness gracious. Who, man, this is exciting. I, I, this is super exciting. Um, this is one of my favorite times of year, and that is it is time for us to start finishing out or planting more fruit trees for our farm and family. Uh, as you guys know, we got a pretty nice little fruit orchard going here on Cog Hill, and this fruit orchard is going to supply a ton of food for us and even our animals. I mean, we got we got all kind of varieties out here and that is we got our, our pear row this is our apple row this is our figs blueberries and blackberries but we haven't finished it out um we got a lot of empty spots here that we're trying to figure out what we want to do with and now is the time to plant fruit trees and bushes because it is fall for us or early stages of winter as a matter of fact now is the perfect perfect time now if we we can wait all the way up until Aprilish, and then it becomes more of a uh, your window of opportunity starts dropping pretty fast at least for us here in central Alabama and we're in zone 8a uh, that's because of our heat right now this is our rainy season this is our wet season plus this is our cool season all your fruit bushes and fruit trees they're starting to go dormant so now is the perfect time to plant fruit trees bushes vines and that's exactly what we're going to go do today um i'm going to see what all we want to put out here and then me and mary car are going to load up and we're going to head over to our favorite nursery at petals from the past and we're going to pick out some some stuff that we need uh, let me show you guys what we got going on so i got my helper tucker out here and so we're gonna look and see what we need now this is my apple row and i got two spots actually I got three but i had to put another pole there and that's something you know i may do that i need three apples pretty much i got an apple spot there that was a, a arkansas black that didn't make it last year uh we had a late freeze and it got that one so i'm going to get another arkansas black because i love that apple and then that leaves me with a spot here and a spot there for apples so i need uh three total apple trees i need two pear trees i got a spot there and we got a spot here for pears this is my figs right here and we just planted this fig right here which we got from a youtube channel called Flomington Famous. You guys be sure to check them out. Now this is a, uh, a kind of a semi-rare fig that is extremely tasty. It's supposed to be super delicious. I haven't had it yet, but just per my research, this fig is awesome. And it's called CLBC, but I got options or I got two more spots for figs here. So we may see what Petals has got fig wise i need seven blueberry bushes this is my blueberry row right here and that'll finish out our blueberries and then right here's our blackberries and so i stopped here and i got this much room for something else blackberry wise so blueberries as you can see this is my blueberry row and this is the figs which is it is time for them to go dormant so everybody's losing their leaves and stuff so here's our fig row and I got one two three four five six seven figs planted two more will give us nine this is our pear row and these are our three varieties of Asian pears right here and then I got two um, Asian persimmons fuyus got two of those guys right there and then that's my European pear which I only got one and that's the Warren so I got two spots for European pears now I've tried a Ayers pear twice right there it has not made it for whatever reason that Ayers pear has not survived I'm either gonna get 
some more European pears, or I may just buy two more Asian pears. So while I'll talk to Jason and see what he thinks about that. While I'm standing right here, I talked about it one time before, but y'all can see this mound right here. This is gonna be my stone fruit. Now stone fruit is, or it gets its name because the seed is a big seed resembling a stone. So this will be peaches, plums, apricots. That's what's going down in here. Maybe some satsumas, which are citrus, and we may put those on the end, but we'll see. But this row's not ready for that. So that may be a project we'll take on next year, or, or like I said, I got until April. So the quicker I can get them in the ground, the better. Me and Brooke may finish this out before then and plant our stone fruit before then, but we'll see on that. Here's our apples. You can see we got one, two, three, four apple trees. We need three more, that'll give us seven. And we got a crab apple on the end. So that is our fruit orchard right now. This is probably one of my favorite spots in the entire farm. Uh, I couldn't grow fruit trees really at our old farm. This was one reason why we wanted to move to this farm or a bigger farm was so we could do stuff like this and provide healthy food for our family. And again, like I said, a lot of this stuff can go to the livestock that, uh, you know, if you get a bad apple or something like that, go there. Uh, we're really going to do a lot of freeze drying. We're going to try a lot of canning. So the fruit orchard is an important part of our homestead here. While we're over there, again, now's the perfect time to plant. Not only fruit trees and fruit bushes and whatnot, almost anything. So I'm gonna grow two roses here, and I'm gonna talk to Jason about those. Um, Tracy at Just Dig It Farms, who, who's our one of our mentors here, um, she gave us two roses that we should, might ought to plant there. And here in the Pater Garden, we gotta finish out our rose swag and we planted American pillar roses here. So we're probably gonna get uh, two more American pillar roses over there. Oh, I love this time of year. <laughs> Whew, I just love gardening. I just love gardening. All right, so me and Mary Carl are fixing to get everything ready, head over to Petals and see what they got and see if we can get this fruit orchard finished out. All right, Cher, if you hold it down while we're gone. You reckon there's anything Moody and Topper would want from the from a certain type of fruit tree? I bet they like apples. Yeah, you know, I think this year, we're going to want to say this year, 2023, we're going to have some showing up fruit. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I do too. I think we're going to have some showing up fruit. So me and Mary Carl decided that since we're in town today, we couldn't pass up and go grab us a meet and three at our local little diner here in Clanton, Alabama. So we're gonna grab us a little something to eat. Then we're headed to Petals because we don't need to be fruit tree shopping on the empty stomach. Got me some new sunglasses. Yes, sir. So um, we stopped at our local store here in town, Clanton Outdoors, and I picked me up some sunglasses. And look, these are thick on the edge right there, so I don't have to worry about these breaking on me. And he said they're also rated as safety glasses, so these are perfect for me on the farm. Now, let's go to Petals and get some trees.
All right, so we're over here in the fruit orchard section of petals. Jason is not here right now, but we'll be back here later on. And so me and Mary Carl are going to see if we can, uh, already had in mind what I already wanted. I got a few questions so I can always ask him via text or I can call Miss Tracy if, uh, if I need some help before Jason gets here. But we'll be going to look around and see what they got and see what we want to grab. Let's see here. Moon glow. They got moon glows in. All right. That is one I want right there. That one looks good too. I definitely like this one. Definitely like the shape of this one. All right, let's grab this one. Now, Bloom Go is going to be a, uh, a European pair. And this is one I wanted last year that was hard to get. But look, we got it this year. And you can see what the fruit looks like right there. Just a beautiful, beautiful pear. And pears are one of my favorites. Favorite fruits. Moon glow is one I wanted last year and they didn't have it. What is it? Like a pear. Okay. It's a pear. All right, so I have totally struck out on a um, airs. And that's a worn. I got a worn. These may be all worns. They are. That's a worn. These are all worns. I don't want a worn pair. I already got it. That's a nectarine. Alright, so we got my moon glow, which is great. That's the one I wanted. That's the one I wanted last year. Let's see what else we got. We don't want a kefir. And gosh, they got a bunch of moon glows this year. Nah, I like that one I got. This is a good one too, but I like the one I got better. I'm thinking I'm thinking in terms of my um, trellis system. See that can go so we're gonna grow that down the line. There's our main trunk line, and then we'll uh, cut it right here and cause it to branch and grow our other two limbs down our line. But you can see this one is already got that one. I can train this one. We can train. It looks very very healthy. And then up here, you can see we're starting to get our another main trunk line here. So we may just cut these off. And um, yeah, I like that one. I like that one a lot. All right, so we're gonna get this one. Got it? All right. Let's see here. This is not a pear. This is a cherry. Cherries. We can um, we can grow cherry trees here, and they look beautiful. It's just that we don't have enough chill hours to um. To produce fruit we may get fruit once every three years or once every four years so that's the issue with uh, cherry trees in our area those are all plums all right so i'm gonna come down here to the apples and we want a arkansas black for sure arkansas black arkansas black where are you there's Fuji, 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 Fuji. Oh, they got a Cumberland Spur. Is that what this is? They got it. Now, that is it. They got the Cumberland Spur. Now, Cumberland Spur is an apple that is an Alabama apple. Y'all believe that? And this is the one I wanted. So we got a Liam here. All right, this one's pretty good. We'll take this one. Here's my Arkansas black. Right here. We're looking for that. This would work right here. We got a big limb there. We got a limb here. This one, I don't have any down there. I don't like that one. This one, eh. That one, the Arkansas Black is an heirloom apple. 
that um that's tough really really tough it um it, it's a almost blight resistant fire blight resistant apple and is a super dark which the picture there don't show it but usually it's a really really dark dark almost it looks like a plum color almost like a not necessarily black but it got a deep deep purple color too which is beautiful hey baby what are you doing hmm? Hmm, what you doing all right so i'm really leaning towards this one this one right here this could be my main leader here so let's grab this one so we got an arkansas black right here so we want those two for sure right there all right good i'm glad i got to come on spur perfect so we got our apples we got the cumberland spur and we got the arkansas black now and now let's look at, at the uh the figs real quick so we got fig wise we got this black mission uh brown turkey but the it's a white marcel now this is the uh thomas jefferson fig This one is uh, LSU Black, which we got two of those. Oh, we got one of those, we got two purples. LSU Black. Papa John, we got a Papa John. Lemon Fig, you don't want a Lemon Fig, they're really not that great. Celeste is a great fig. That's your old fig that your grandma would have grown. Celeste and Brown Turkeys. Green Eschia, which is my favorite so far and I'm leaning towards getting another one of those but let's see all right there's the Thomas Jefferson fig the Chicago hardy which is very very popular up north because this fig is the most cold tolerant fig that I know of that's your brown turkey Rourke, which is the improved Celeste, LSU Purple, Alma, that's the one I want right there. This is a double bloomer right here. And, oh this one looks good. See all the different shoots coming up out of it? That looks good right there. That looks good. I like that. See, we got our, got three, got three branches coming out of it right there. Now, so you would look at this one and say, this is not bad, but you look at this one, and it's really one branch that splits up. But this is this is kind of what you want when it comes to figs. And I'll go show you their figs and how they're cut and how we're doing ours too. So let's get an Alma right here. It's a double fruiter, which means this is gonna produce fruit twice, which is awesome. All right, so we got our fig. We needed one more fig though, didn't we? Let's see. Gotta write that stuff down because I sure forget. All right, yeah, I needed another fig, but we may wait because I didn't see anything that tripped my fancy. I'm over here looking at figs, and I just had one that was really, really good. And it was, and I know I'm gonna butcher this, but it's the Violet de Bordeaux. That fig was really, really good. And it's obviously a late producer because you can see all the purple figs on it. And um, I found one that was pretty ripe and it was very, very delicious. But I came over here and I cro came across this one. And I know this one. And it is the lemon fig or fig lemons, what they got it listed. But this one right here, I think people buy because of the name and it's a yellow type fig. But it's not that flavorful. So. You know, if you're a fig connoisseur and you just want a fig and, you know, then yeah, you know, you could get that one. But if you're limited to space and growing figs for flavor and, and I wouldn't get the lemon fig. That's just my opinion. It's just what I think. There may be some lemon fig lovers out there that are watching this and saying, no, you're crazy. But my opinion is that that lemon fig I would hold up off of because there's a lot more varieties that are more delicious than that lemon fig i really do want this fig um but i don't like buying three gallon figs and for several reasons um one 
is that, see I don't have all my multi canes coming out like I really would like to have. Then, I don't know what that is on top of that, that's pretty cool. Then, the, the pricing of a three gallon fig versus a one gallon fig is crazy different in price. And a one gallon fig will grow extremely fast. So it's not that big of an advantage between the two. If you're buying figs, buy one gallon figs. Same with blackberries. If you can buy one gallon blackberries or the smaller blackberries, do that too, because that'll save you a lot of money. Because those guys are just gonna jump once you get them in the ground. So I don't see a three gallon um, Violet de Bordeaux. Oh, I didn't see a one gallon. <laughs> didn't see a one gallon one of those. So we're gonna hold up on that one. And uh, we'll have one spot for a fig, which is not that big a deal because figs grow super fast. All right, I think I got it. So I ended up calling Tracy from Just Dig It Farms, who used to work at Pedal for, for years and years and years and years and years. And since I didn't have Jason to lean on, I leaned on her about blueberries. And like I said, I wanna grow blueberries in the way that they produce fruit so I can have fruit for a longer period of time. Instead of planting varieties that produce fruit all at the same time, we wanna extend that growing season. So what we went with is, I got two Austin right here, which are really, really early. That'll be my first ones. Then I got, it's supposed to be two premieres. All right, so then I got two premieres. I got to go grab another one. And that's going to be another early fig. I mean, fig, early blueberry. I got a Climax, which we're getting. Matter of fact, I think it goes like this. I think Climax will be next after my Austin. And then the premiere. And then later in the season will be the Powder Blue. And I already got some there that are more later season blueberries. So this should finish our blueberries out. But let me go grab another Climax real quick. All right, I think we got it, Mary. I think we got what we need, girl. All right, so I told you I wanted to show you how they got their their um, figs pruned. And show you what I was talking about, how you want that branching from underneath on them. Now here are their Asian pears right there. Crazy. Aren't they beautiful? All right, their figs are behind it. Whoa. <clears throat> Right here, here are the fig trees. And see they got the middle cut out and they got what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine main branches. And look how thick these branches are. And they just, you see they're not tall because you want to be able to, look at this one got pruned hard. And um, figs are relentless. They, man, they grow and they grow super fast y'all. But you can see these figs are not tall at all. And they're gonna come in and they'll cut all those little little shoots out because it grows like a bush almost. So yeah, this is a uh, this is how you, we're gonna grow our figs, which we already started. But prune them back so you can pick them. You know how to get a ladder, and um, just perfect, 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 perfect. And that's why I'm looking for the figs that are that are branching underneath like that. Is that fig of the Victorians gonna eventually get this big? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll see next yeah. year for sure. All right. One big tip. And if you follow us, you've heard me repeat this. So, But I just want you guys to know, if you're buying your plants from a nursery and got a good little ways to drive home or any, any distance, you want to cover them. Even if it's summertime, they still can get wind burned. So if you, if you got them in the back of the truck, it doesn't take much. You just want to keep them covered because you don't want to get them, you know, you don't want to get home and your plants look terrible and possibly even worse. So always cover your plants when you transport them from the nursery to your house. Thankfully today we can cover everything up with our bed cover. Or a tanu cover, I should say. All right, now we gotta get to planting. All 
All right, let's go home and plant some trees. All right, where's my pear? That's it right there. Moon glow. All right, let's get this thing in the ground first. Now, my soil is very acidic. Um, if you follow us, you know I've mentioned it several times. I had the soil tested here when we first got here. And the only place I've put lime out to bring my acidity down is um, over there where the garden is, the big garden where we got our greens planted and a greenhouse at. Over in the fruit orchard, I haven't done anything. So what I'm gonna do is it's just gonna add lime to the hole when we plant the plant. Other than that, really not gonna do, do much of nothing else. Um, I do got a little bit of compost, some black cow that I'll use on everybody. But other than that, that's it. We're not gonna put any fertilizer in there. We want these guys not to worry about doing anything up in here because it's dormant season. We want these babies to stay dormant. All we want are the roots to just slow grow and get a little bit established and get used to the environment. And come spring and summer, that's when we want the growth up here to start. During the dormant months, we want the growth down here. So we want the growth, so no fertilizer. That's what makes growing this time of the year so awesome, is that we don't have to worry about anything. All right. Let's, uh, let's get you guys in the ground. Now, I will do one thing during the uh, uh, winter months, and it's two, well, today it's not, but we got another heat tomorrow. It's gonna be 70 and the low in the 50s. So that's a little too warm for what I wanna do, but I'm gonna spray a dormant oil on the fruit trees, and that's an organic oil, and we're gonna spray it, and that's gonna help with pests and um, funguses and that kind of thing during the dormant season, hence the name dormant oil. But uh, when I do that, I'll let you guys know and I take you guys with me. This one's gonna be pretty easy because I've had an Ayers pair there twice. So the hole is pretty much there. Should have the lime already in it. So I don't really have to do anything. Should have the compost in it. Um, so we're good with this uh, moon glow, which I'm super excited about. And look how that is set up perfect. Look at there, we can start training these on down. And I got this one right here and I can start training that one that way. Yes. I'm not really going to um, prune and get this thing trained right now because I'm gonna run out of daylight if I do. So we'll save that for another video. Maybe when we put the horticultural oil spray on it, the dormant spray, we can come back and um, show you guys pruning these guys and getting them ready. Now, if this one don't make it, something's wrong with this spot. You know what I mean? Something's definitely wrong with this spot. Now, you don't wanna, you don't wanna bury it too deep. You don't want that crown to be below your, um, your ground. Don't want your tree to rot. And like I said, I've already dug this hole one time, so my hole is about twice as wide or three times as wide as my planting bowl. So we're good there, and I've already added compost to this spot. So we are absolutely fine here. All right, here we go. See, so we're not, we're, we're, we're not below, see, there's our root stock, so the, the base of the tree is not below the ground, which is what we want. And I got my drip irrigation on it. We got some rain coming in later this week. So it's just perfect time. Perfect, perfect time to plant. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's get that Arkansas black. And again, this hose already had lime added to it and compost. So it is good to go. And I don't want you guys adding lime to your soil now until it's been tested. Don't 
sit here and watch, don't see me adding lime to my soil and think you gotta add lime to your soil. Your pH may be correct. So if you don't have your soil tested, don't add any lime to it. Cause you've been making it worse than what it is. All right, let's take this out so I can use this bucket. This is the Cumberland Spur, which is the Alabama apple. This soil is so nice and soft now since we've had that mat over it and then mulched it. It's not hard like it was when we first dug all this. It's nice, nice and fluffy. There we go. I'll add a little bit of compost to it. Then we're gonna add a little lime. All right, how we want that one? We want it to grow just like that right there. Yep, right there. All right, good deal. We can move that one down there. One of those can, that's gonna be my center leader. Those two can go right there. We'll cut this, cut this, and this will be mine going that way. Perfect. I'm gonna tell y'all, I had zero confidence in growing fruit trees this time last year. Zero confidence. Never grown and done it before. Actually, I mean, I've planted fruit trees at our other farm in the past, but very unsuccessful at it, mainly because of the soil we had there and all the shade. Our other farm was complete shade, pretty much. So we were so limited on what we could grow. Here, the sky's the limit. All right, there we go. Perfect. And here's our drip right here. We'll move, uh-oh. We'll move our drip a little closer. Right there. Cover that bare ground up. And man, y'all, we are good to go. All right, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. For those wondering, the apple trees and the pear trees are 15 to 16 foot apart. And the trellis system, the first wire is three foot, then two foot, and then two foot. The fig trees are 15 foot apart and the blueberries are seven foot apart. The blueberries and the figs, I don't want that weed mat all the way up against it because I want those canes to come out. And I don't want that weed mat to hinder those cane growths. So I just keep it pulled back. The mulch can cover, but I don't want that weed mat to. Man, how awesome is that? Man, this is, whoo, makes me pumped. <laughs> Oh, it's such, such, brings so much joy to me. Not only did I get a lot of the fruit orchard taken care of, I still got some, you know, spots here and there, but for the most part, I got a lot of the fruit orchard taken care of. Got to spend the day with my beautiful and awesome daughter, and I got me a new pair of sunglasses. And it don't get much better than that, does it? I hear Moody hollering at me. I better go feed him before. I get in big trouble. Hey guys, always remember, take your pots back to your nursery. They can clean them and reuse those things. I'm coming, Moody. Look at the gorgeous sky this evening. Just absolutely beautiful. I'm coming, buddy. Who are you talking to? Huh? Look at the sky though, isn't it gorgeous? Look, all the way around. Just beautiful, every evening. And the sunset is over here, but look how the sky all the way around is just absolutely stunning.
Wow. All right, Moody. I'm coming, I'm coming. I know you don't care about that sunset. I know, buddy. I know you don't care.